Welcome back all, this is Daz from Motorara Techniques. Up this week, I'm gonna do some more Arduino projects. Um, so this one, I'm looking at doing some random sort of uh, LED lights switching on and off on some background flats that I've built. Um, obviously, it can be sort of incorporated into your normal buildings. Um, I was working in the layout room today and I was actually just looking at splitting some of my LED lights up so I can actually do it. This is not my code. Um, it's by a YouTuber called Rick Stone King. So he's got a YouTube channel called The Switch List. I will definitely will link that description below because he's, he's done some great work here in the Arduino world. So... Big shout out to my, all my Patreons out there. Every little bit counts. I oh, will put a link to that below. Without further ado, let's get started. MRT Scale Prints, helping you to add realism to your model railway. We are producing craftsman quality prints in various scales, including HO, O and N scales. We are proudly Australian owned and operated. www.modelrailwaytechniques.com Alright, so let's get started. So what we're going to do, we're going to quickly have a quick look at the code. If you want a, an in-depth look at the actual code, please, I'll link it below. Go into Rick's YouTube channel. Uh, the switch list and I'll link this particular video I got this idea from um, to look at for my model railway. So the first thing obviously we need to look at is what uh, digital pins we're, we're going to look at. So the first pin is digital pin 2 and the last pin we're going to look at is digital pin 8 and obviously we've got 8 pins there. So after the pins he, um, he defines what he calls light groups. So um, on this particular sketch, we've defined four light groups. So basically what a light group is, a light group is used to group outputs together for a single building. So if you define three groups, then you have three separate buildings. This needs to be changed if uh, a different number of groups is desired. So that's just a matter of changing that over here. So we've got four light, four light groups, and all those light groups are defined within those lines of the code there. So the delay time is the, the number of milliseconds to delay between iterations of the loop. So currently it's 1,000 milliseconds, so that's one second. So obviously you can go anything up to several hours is my understanding, or several days is by what uh, Rick's saying on his YouTube. He sort of suggested maybe around 60,000 milliseconds, which is around 10 minutes. So what that does, it's one, right now it's set at one second between iterations so that's obviously it's going all the way through um through the code or through the loop of the code i should say before it starts again on its uh, merry way uh, changing the leds as it goes now one little feature here um is it's he, he set up a whole lot of debug um print lines or serial print lines i should say and i will show you what this looks like this is actually a really good feature to to work out what your output and what your light groups are for a given time, what pin is being fired off at any particular time. So the beauty of also this this part of the debugging is, and he, he explains, Rick explains in his video, what actually happens is he had a, a, a bad wiring on one of his wires or um, also it could be if one of your digital outputs is not working correctly. What it'll actually do, it'll scan through individually so it'll start at pin number two and it'll go three four five six seven eight and nine and it'll actually turn all your leds on that you have connected to those outputs which is a nice little feature just to make sure everything's running and then it'll set itself and then it'll start going through its iterations and its loops so he's also set up um what what's the, the in arduino land or arduino world i should say is a boolean so this is um keeps track of whether the lights have already changed within the current building. So the last thing you want is the the loop going through and then say light number one coming on in building one 
and then it just continuing on and then obviously the next very light will continue on it it'll be number say number one again that wouldn't be all that realistic so he's just adding that level of randomness to it um, different timings and all that type of thing um, as i said it's not my code i don't fully understand how he's done it but when you see the code in action when i set it all up here it's uh, it's really lovely to watch so further to that boolean it also talks about and um, also tracks the state of a, a given pin so either it's true or false on and off type thing zero or one so it's obviously part of the debugging process what we'll have a look at in the um, the serial monitor very shortly so currently on this iteration the code that i'm showing you here it's he's actually set the probability of the two light groups so group one is zero and group two is number one um that's just the way it is in this world so he's obviously worked out sorry rick has justified within it so group zero is going to have four leds and group one has got three so obviously that's a another place you can change that and if you obviously you're going to put you know more light groups in that's fine you just obviously continue out uh, those justifications to group two three four and five if that's what you want to do um, if you're going to go anything further than that my understanding and tell me if i'm wrong you would have to then define more light groups up in there the definitions at the top here so i think that's a uh, sort of enough you be quite honest with you without change all you probably need to do is if change the delay time on this and most people would go on their merry way and it'd be fantastic so one thing i am going to look at doing it probably runs up to about 20 leds i think so one thing i might look at doing is so i can run more leds i might group different buildings in a whole city together or a large town but using some sort of relay so i can just add a little bit more power if i'm using 12 volt if i'm using 12 volt leds just to you know make give more illumination so to speak because obviously the uh the um, arduino nano has only got a particular a certain amount of output uh, in regards to how many leds it can actually run so what we'll quickly have a look at is the schematics as i showed you on the breadboard so what we're going to do is we'll start with the power supply so there's two ways you can power this circuit up is you can as i did on the bench test either do a usb but obviously out on the layer or something similar to that or your on your little diorama you're probably not going to have the usb connection so the other way of doing it is via this ground pin and also the vi in so you can supply a 5 volt dc power supply to that and that will be plenty to to run what we need to do so what we'll do we'll then run across the top here so we I'll, We'll start with the LEDs. So we're going to go digital pin number nine is going to go up to the anode. And then we'll just quickly run along. So we got digital pin nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, and two. So that was all defined in the sketch that we talked about just before. So pins, digital pin 2 to 9 will control these. So what we then need to look at doing is, now obviously LED you can power any way you want. You can either have the, the resistor, as my understanding, on the anode or the cathode. So I've chosen to do it on the anode. So then obviously on the cathode, the negative side, I just run that back to a negative bus here, which is connected on the ground of the Arduino. So each LED has one of those. So now this is a little bit, uh, I've just looked at this photo, it's a little bit incorrect, I should say, um, in, just in regards to the way I've set the um, the lighting groups up so the, in my version the lighting group I had four LEDs in lighting group zero and and then four in lighting group so that's pretty well the, just the connection so it's, it's quite easy connections to this so you got 
just to recap, so you've got either your, your 5 volt coming in on your USB or your 5 volt coming in on your VIN or your ground pin. You have a ground out for your LED, for the cathodes, and then on the anode, you I I chose on this occasion to have the uh, resistor. So you probably depending on how bright you want the LEDs, maybe around a thousand. And then each LED has its own um, resistor in that regards. So what we currently got there is it going through its motions now. Unfortunately, just the just due to some of the, the, the brightnesses of my LEDs, they are a little bit hard to see. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to quickly push the reset button on the Arduino. And we'll see if we can pick that up. And then you'll see it will flash through all the different LEDs. You can see that the LED 8 and 9 are a little bit, uh, a little bit slow or a little bit uh, not high intensity illumination. So so that's basically what it does. So when you, the, you set the system up... Um, so when you set the system going, I should say, or the sketch going, it just goes through all the different LEDs that are connected to the to each of the individual pins, and that gives you a little bit of uh, just a visual fault finding just to make sure if one of them, for whatever reason, for whatever reason, doesn't fire off, means you might have an issue with the digital pin, or probably more likely to to do with your wiring. So what we're going to do here quickly is I'll quickly clear the output so I'll quickly bring the output uh, the serial monitor up to you so you'll see what it does you'll see it will scroll through all the pins so you can see two three four five six and seven then what it actually does it goes from there now we're looking at group zero and we're turning on pin number nine which is this very dull one at the end here, unfortunately. So then it will go through its reiteration, and you will see very shortly. Now we've gone on group zero again, and we turn pin nine off. So it's obviously very random, so you can't actually pick uh, what what lights are going to go on next. And I suppose that's the beauty of this um, this sketch. Let's just turn the auto scroll back on quickly. So pin 9's gone back on again. Now we're looking at pin number 2. So obviously that's our first pin that has now fired off. And that's also a part of group, uh, group 0. Alright, so now we've gone back to pin 1. We might just uh, reset it again. So it'll go through two, three, four, five. All the lights will go on, so we know they're all working correctly. Now we can see that pin number four has come on, which is this blue LED here. And also pin number nine has come on. Pin two has just fired, and so pin two is a part of group zero and pin three so the basically the way the groups are here so the first three so the first four leds are group zero and the, the all the rest are, are, are group one so pin three has come on group zero pin nine's come back on And pin three, sorry, pin pin four. Pin three has just gone off. So currently we've got pins two, four, and nine on. So you can sort of see the, the random as how that's just going through. So it's just a matter of working out which pins are going to be which part of which group, which is which is reason relatively easily. You can obviously add more light groups to it if you if you feel if you see fit. So what we're going to look at doing now is going over to some of my my flats, my background flats. So I will put a link to that video below. So at this point in time, I'll just show you what it looks like with two of them. So it's about eight or nine LEDs on across the two buildings. So let's go across there. 
So here are the background flats. I have sped this footage up a little bit just to sort of show you the, how quickly the radiations look like and what it actually looks like. Obviously, you wouldn't have it this quick in real life because it's just uh, not all that, it's not all that uh, realistic. So we'll call that a wrap. So that's at the end of the video. So let's just recap a little bit what I, what we went through. Obviously, we looked at the code briefly. I will link to the, the original code on the Switch List YouTube channel. It obviously goes into a little more in depth and knowledge of the code than what I what, which I don't have. So we looked at uh, the connections to the digital pins. We also looked at how it might integrate with my background flats or how whatever buildings you want to put it on. So um, please comment below if it's something that you would probably look at using or have more knowledge of the code than what I do. I think it's a fantastic little code and. Um, Definitely the designer has done a great job there. So as I said, I will link to the description below. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Make sure you subscribe. Click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. Support us on Patreon. Like us on Facebook and Instagram at Model Railroad Technique.